Jesus would never do what people asked him to do. Jesus always did exceedingly, come on now, abundantly, above and beyond. Here comes a crazy word that the church even cannot be ready for. Check this out. Check out this word. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, exceedingly. I told you, you cannot be ready for exceedingly. Exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. Exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. So open your mouth and say that with me. Exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. This is the Jesus factor. But let me ask you the question, very important question. Do you have the Jesus factor? I want to see the word manifested in your life. I want to see the same factors as the one you follow. You need to have the same factors as Jesus. So, what are the factors that Jesus had? One of the most important factors that Jesus had is, is this thing. That Jesus would never do what people asked him to do. Jesus always did exceedingly, come on now, abundantly, above and beyond. Remember this other time when they went to Jesus in a storm and they were trying to wake him up to, so that Jesus would save their boat from sinking? Remember that? Jesus did not save the boat from sinking. He calmed the entire storm. Ah, Jesus did exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. And remember when the 5,000 men with their wives and, and, and those cribbing children, wah, they, they were crying and they were hungry. Jesus did not give them food. Jesus gave them a feast. He gave them so much food that after they were full, there were 12 baskets full of food. Because Jesus did exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. There is this story that will blow your mind and it has to blow your mind and it will blow your theology also. Because in this story, Jesus heals a woman and he doesn't even know the woman's name. In fact, Jesus heals a woman without even knowing what a sickness was. Today we ask, okay, what your sickness, can you give me your details about your sickness? Tell me exactly what your sickness is and then I'll pray for you, right? right? That is the advice we, 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 we give people who pray for people. But Jesus did not even know her. In fact, Jesus healed the woman without even knowing she was sick. In fact, Jesus healed the woman even without knowing who the woman was and what her sickness was. And if she was sick or not, in fact, Jesus healed a woman even without knowing she even existed. Can you get healed without even Jesus healing you? Let's find out. A woman in the crowd had been uh, bleeding, say bleeding, bleeding, had been bleeding for 12 years, but no one was able to heal her. She came up behind Jesus, not in front of Jesus, behind Jesus and touched the edge of his coat and instantly her bleeding stopped. And then Jesus said, who touched me? But when all the people said they had not touched him, Peter said, master, the people are still around you, are pushing against you. But Jesus said, someone did Touch me. Because I felt power go out from me. When the woman saw she could not hide, she came forward shaking and fell down before Jesus as if she had done something wrong. But while all the people listened, she told why she had touched him and how she had been. She did not wait for 10 days. She did not wait for the right time, Sunil. No, no, no prophet telling her in six months you'll get up and walk. No. Instantly. She got healed. And here's the answer. Here's the key of Christianity. Why she got healed instantly? Because Jesus said to her, Dear woman, you are made well because you believed. Because you 
believed. Not because I healed you, because you believed. Any believers in the house, because you believed. You came to church because you believed. You are healed because you believed. Because you believed. If you can pull your healing with your faith, he doesn't have to heal you. You need to know him so well. You need to know him so well. Only sons and daughters can do that. I'm sorry, religious people cannot do that. Servants cannot do that. Only sons and daughters can do that. She stopped Jesus. Check this out. Check this out. Ah, I love this part. At once, Jesus, real, Jesus realized? Jesus, re the one who knows everything? But at once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. And he turned around. She made Jesus turn around in the crowd. And he asked, who touched my clothes? Jesus was going to another place. It was not her time. It was not, tell your neighbor, it's not my time. Go ahead. It's not my time. It's not your time. It's not your time. But I'm pulling my miracle. Ahead of time. It was not her time. Jesus was going to another place. Jesus was going to heal another person. Jesus was going to heal Jairus' daughter, a more important person than her, right? But then Jesus stopped, wait. And he realized that power has been pulled from him. Jesus, and here's the crazy thing. Someone pulled his power without his permission. Someone pulled his anointing without his awareness. Someone pulled a miracle from Jesus without even asking him. Someone did something absolutely unprecedented. I started the sermon by showing you a Jesus who did exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond. But I'm ending the sermon by showing you a woman who did exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond so that you would not just clap but you also would do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond I want people like this woman who will stand up and grab their own miracle because you believe because you believe but, but, but can you do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond H how how Someone tell me the answer. How? How? With what are you going to believe? Here comes the key. Here comes the key. You have to listen to this really carefully. Here comes the bomb. Because after this, your life is going to change. Not because I said so, but because you're going to do so. You're going to change your own life. You are your own prophet. You are your own pastor. You're going to change your own life with the power that is in you because here's the key here's the key now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond all that we ask or think but according to the power that works in according the same power that was working in Jesus now is working on the inside of you the same power that was doing all the miracles for Jesus now is working on the inside of you. The same power that calmed the storm, the same power that commanded the fish, the same power that healed the sick, the same power that multiplied food, the same power who brought abundance in situations of lack, the same power who raised the dead, the same power who made a dead man walk in his grave clothes and then made everyone strip him that same power now works I said works I did not say exists I did not say lives but works on the inside 
of you. You have a power that is working. Say it's working. Stop, stop yawning and say it's working. It's working on the inside of me. There is power working on the inside of me. There are problems working around me, but there is power working on the inside of me. There is bad news working on the outside and around the world, but it's power working to change the world on the inside of me. You have power that's working on the inside of you. You're walking by faith, but the power is working on the inside of you. The power to, to do exceedingly. Come on, say that with me. You have the power to do. Working. Say working on the inside of me. So now, what are you going to do with that power working on the inside of you? Take that power and do exceedingly, abundantly, above and beyond all that you can think or all that you might be asking for. You are limitless, not because you belong to limitless church. You are limitless because you have limitless power working on the inside of you.